most marvelous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I also come giving all the honor, praise, and glory to God, our Father, because we know that without him, we could not have started the program, and we certainly could not have finished it. I'm also going to take just a moment to give a shout out to my husband, A.R. I want you to know that I really appreciated your support, your understanding, but I mostly appreciated the fact that you did not sit like a spectator while I was on this journey. You were with me every step of the way. Amen. It did not go unnoticed. All right, so my plan here today, my here today is to give a brief, give brief highlights about my dissertation. The dissertation is probably one of the hardest things that the doctoral students have to accomplish because it allows us to choose a subject and then pour all of the knowledge that we get throughout the course of the program into that subject. So the result is a 30,000 word <laughs> paper that should be relevant and maybe even a little profound. So my uh, dissertation was entitled Looking for a Savior. And the reason why I did that is that if eternity is hanging in the balance, and it is, then we need to be very careful as we look for a savior, and we better be very wise when we choose one. <clears throat> My approach was to look at the five major religions of the world. Those five major religions are Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islam. And the reason why I looked at these five religions, I wanted to know what they had to offer and what their pathway to salvation was. So I focused on the God of each of those religions and the pathway to salvation. So I'll begin with Judaism. The God of Judaism is a covenant-making and a covenant-keeping God. We know that there are eight covenants in the Bible, and we know probably the most familiar one is the Abrahamic covenant, where God met a man named Abram, changed his name to Abraham, made some promises, and those promises were kept. That's the introduction that the Jewish people have to God. He makes promises, he keeps promises. The other thing about Judaism is that they know that God is also a rule giver, a law giver. And we know that the law came through Moses. So the Jewish approach to God and their pathway to salvation focuses on keeping the law, and by keeping the law, you can have a good relationship with God. As a sidebar, we should know that Moses came down off of that mountain with 10 commandments. Over the centuries, renowned rabbis have added uh, explanations that explain the 10, that there is now the Talmud, that is a Jewish document of oral and written tradition from the rabbis of ancient times up until today. And so the 10 has morphed into 613. And I bring that up to say, if we couldn't keep one, don't touch that tree. Okay, what are we going to do with 613? God help us. All right, so the next religion is Christianity. And it can be said that Christianity was born out of Judaism. In actuality, the same God that the Jews worship, that's the same God that Christians worship. As a matter of fact, Christians and Jews walk hand in hand through the Bible right up until the New Testament. When you get to the New Testament, that's where we part ways. Because the Christians actually believe that God Almighty put on flesh, came to this earth, died and rose again to purchase our salvation. That's what the Christian believes, and his pathway to salvation is through the blood of Jesus. Whereas the Jew focuses on the law, the Christian focuses on the grace that God had to come down here and die for us. The next religion that I, thought, uh, that I focused on was Hinduism. Now, Hinduism is very different 
than Christianity and Judaism because Hinduism is polytheistic. Hindus worship many, many gods. Now they do have one supreme being that they think created everything, and his name is Brahman. And he's, but he is not the only god that they worship. Hindus can find deity in everything from what to rats. So it is a polytheistic religion, and their pathway to salvation is also a pathway of works. They believe that you will go through a repeated cycles of life and death, life and death. We call that reincarnation. So Hindus believe that you die and you get reincarnated as a different form on this earth. And that continues, and it can continue for thousands of years. It continues until you have built up enough good karma so that you can break the cycle of life and death. So Hindus believe in reincarnation and their pathway to salvation is one of works. Now, Buddhists were born out of Hinduism, but they're very different. While the Hindu believes in many gods, it's actually true that the Buddhist does not believe in God. Not as an entity, not as a person, not as the Western mind would consider God. Buddhists believe that you will go through this same cycle of living and dying, it's called samsara, until you break the, the cycle and enter a state of nirvana. Again, just like with the Hindus, the cycle is broken when you build up enough good karma. So once again, we are looking at a works-based religion. And the last religion that I focused on was Islam. And Islam is, uh, the god of Islam is referred to as Allah. <laughs> Islam was born in, uh, on the Saudi Arabian Peninsula in Mecca. And the father of Islam is the prophet Muhammad. And according to the followers of Islam, he is the greatest and the last prophet of God. They believe that Allah created and made everything and their pathway to salvation is also based on works because they have five pillars of Islam. And those five pillars include things like you must pray five times a day facing Mecca. Uh, if you're financially able, you must make a pilgrimage to Mecca in your lifetime. Uh, they, uh, keeping certain feasts like Ramadan, which I believe occurs in the month of October. So their pathway to salvation is also works. So after looking at all of these five religions, I came to a conclusion. And, this is, and my conclusion was based on two very important things. Of the five major religions, all of them, all of them, except for Christianity, are based on works. That was troubling for me because how will you know when you've worked enough to earn salvation? And the other thing that none of the other religions had to offer was a God who loved his children so much that when we were in trouble, he didn't send an angel, he didn't send a prophet, he came himself and snatched us back Amen. from the jaws of hell. Oh, what a God. And based on those two things, my conclusion was, and hopefully it will be the conclusion of those who read my paper, that there was only one religion, that was Christianity, that offered a God who was not only able to be the savior of the world, but who was also worthy. Amen. Amen.